memorandum and article these two documents are the fundamental or constitutional documents of the company all the details are of the relating to the company as mentioned under moa and aoa normally section 4 5 and 6 gives you the detailed provisions of memorandum and article let us see the basic definitions of memorandum and article 2 clause 56 defines the memorandum means the memorandum of association of a company either originally formed when it is originally formed at the time of incorporation or after incorporation you can alter it from time to time according to the law same goes with article it means the article of association as originally framed when it is originally framed at the time of incorporation or after incorporation we can alter it also from time to time as and when we are required so what is the general interpretation these two documents are the fundamental documents the memorandum contains the fundamental information of the basic information of the company what are those basic information we will discuss it right it defines the powers of the company it limits the powers of the company while articles of association it is a smaller document as compared to the memorandum it generally contains the internal functioning matters of the company what are the provisions of what are the contents of memorandum what are the contents of article we are going to discuss in the upcoming slide don't worry till this point we can just understand what is the memorandum it is that document which contains all the fundamental conditions of the company the basic information of the company right there are six or seven clauses which we need to discuss and articles means the internal rules of the company what we, what are the internal rules and regulations we will discuss we will be having the sample moa aoa of course the uh, the memorandum is subordinate to the act that is the companies act that means memorandum is subordinate that is to the companies act that means the memorandum cannot in the memorandum there cannot be written any point which is against the companies act you cannot uh, uh, give the memorandum the right to write anything which is against the companies act any such clause if we found in the memorandum which is against the company law that clause will be void ab initio simple same goes with the article the article is subordinate of course to the company law and to the memorandum as well that means if in our, your article if anything is written against the memorandum that particular clause of aoa will be defective will be void ab initio and the art the memorandum will prevail over the article the memorandum is normally a constitutional document with the between the company and the outsiders how the outsider will be take uh, will be agreeing or making a contract with the company articles are basically for the insiders for the members within themselves how it is so we will be distinguishing the contents of memorandum and article tomorrow so far so good yes simple for today we are just discussing the first clause of memorandum the memorandum clause have five or six clause basically why i am saying five or six please try to understand section 4 sub section 1 says what will be the contents of memorandum first will be the name clause what is the name of the company second will be the address what will be your address third will be your objects what are the purpose of the company sec fourth will be the liability whether the liability of the members are limited or unlimited this one line will be mentioned right fifth will be capital clause and subscriber clause means who are the initial subscribers and what all capital they are subscribing what will be your authorized capital who are your initial subscribers their name and address and what is the amount of capital they are subscribing to see these five clauses are applicable to the public company and private company but in the one person company all these points all these five will be there and additionally clause 6 that is nomination clause that is only that is only in case of opc will be there now what is an opc one person company in the one person company there is only one member what will be the effect of the death of the member will the company be dissolved no the company is a separate person it needs to continue forever till it is finally till it has been wound up but 
if in case of one person company if that one person dies or becomes disqualified by law who is going to be the member that is the nominee of that one person will be acting as member if that one person dies or becomes lunatic or insolvent or whatever disqualified by law that is basically the nomination clause that is only in case of opc otherwise for normal private and public companies only these five clauses will be taking place now we are for today we are just discussing the first clause that is the name clause the name clause says that the section 4 sub section 2 says that the name of the company shall not be identical with the name of existing company first of all exactly same that is identical say for example reliance industries limited is always all, only there or uh, uh, is already there can we make a new company in the in the name of reliance industries limited no this is identical or if not identical you are not supposed to take any name which resembles too nearly to the name of the existing company say for example if you are not taking reliance industries limited as your name you are taking reliance industries incorporation limited so it is closely re resembling with the reliance industries why we are debarring you to take similar names because it gives the shareholders or the public a wrong impression that this company is attached with that company is it it might be a group company or holding a subsidiary to that company so you are not allowed to take any identical or too closely resembled name of the existing company or you cannot take such name which constitute an offense you cannot take a word which is illegal which is undesirable in the opinion of the government that is roc undesirable undesirable names which offense which which is of an offensive nature which is of an illegal nature you are not supposed to take any name right like that simple subsection 3 provides that any such name without prejudice to this ye to hai hi uske alawa the company shall not be registered by roc in the name which contains any word any expression which is against which is connected with the patronage of the state here state means the state as per constitution that is the government the central government the state government the local authority the corporation the body corporate say for example you are what is the what are these words like say for example republic uh preamble right ashok chakra these are the pat the words which are the patronage of the government or the state or the local authority right you cannot take your company's name as indian government limited what is this name indian government limited you can't take these kinds of name because they are directly related to the patronage of the government simple or such words as may be prescribed right now they are not prescribed unless the approval of central government has been obtained so what is the whole crux you can not use directly these words which are having a direct relation with the government or your state or your corporation but if you want to take such word in your name of the company you need to apply to the central government that is mc you need to take prior approval if they approve then you can apply for the incorporation of the company with such name this is the crux of section 4 sub section 3 now when we are talking about name reservation we had already gone through one thing that is what is the form of application of the company that is spice plus but in the spice plus we need to discuss some more things in the name clause itself now what is the rule 9 says the application for reservation of name shall be made through spice plus see people get confused between two forms one is spice plus and second is run reserve unique name so at the time of incorporation the spice plus if we if we go through spice plus they have two parts first part of spice plus is reserving the name you can reserve your name by filling the first part of spice plus at the time of incorporation once the company is then later you can 
fill the part B and get your company incorporated. Now, after your company is incorporated, now you again want to change your name, then the form will be used, run. Reserve unique name. So initially, when you are taking the name of the company, reserving the name of your company at the time of incorporation, you need not to file the form run. The only Spice Plus will be filed. Simple. And at any point after your incorporation, if you trying, to, if you are attempting to alter your name, if you are trying to change your name, then the form run will be used. Of course, some more things in the context of name that you need to apply the word limited if you are opening up a public limited company. You need to apply the word private limited in case of private limited company. That is mandatory. However, these words limited and private limited need not to be attached with Section 8 company, government company, and IFSC companies, that is International Financial Service Company. They need to attach only IFSC at the last of the name. So these types of companies are exempted from attaching the word limited or private limited. What was important in this slide that the SPICE plus itself uses is used to reserve the name at the time of incorporation. And at any point thereafter, if you want to amend your name, alter your name, you can use the form run. So the SPICE plus and run are two different forms. The SPICE plus is a very important form. It is an integrated web form. It offers 10 services across three departments of the government. That is MCA, Labor Ministry, Revenue Department. So when you are complying with the, you are applying for the company in Form Spice Plus, you can avail as much as 10 services at the time of incorporation itself. Of course, Maharashtra mein ek aur service hai, abhi hum baat kar rahe hai, Maharashtra ke liye bhi, that is professional tax. Agar aap Maharashtra ki company hai, to professional tax number bhi le sakte hai. Wo abhi hum baat mein baat kar rahe hai. So as, as the ease of doing business, government of, uh, Modi, that is BJP government, is always hyping the issue of ease of doing business. That Spice Plus is an integrated single form in which a new company can avail 10 services, that is 10 different licenses and approvals at the time of incorporation itself. The name can be reserved in form Spice Plus Part A, that is initially you need to apply at Part A get your name reserved and approved. Once your name is approved, you can apply in part B of that existing Spice Plus. In the Spice Plus part B, you need you can get avail various services like your incorporation, all the details of incorporation, DIN allotment. It is to be noted that the directors need to take DIN number, director identification number. However, at the time of incorporation, that is by filing Spice Plus, up to three DINs can be taken initially. Say, for example, your company are having three directors. Three direct three DINs can be taken in the SPICE Plus itself. You need not to apply for DIN separately. In, more the, in the case of more than three directors, first you need to take the DIN of three directors in the SPICE Plus. Then you need to apply separately for the application of DIN. So three DIN allotments can be taken with the SPICE Plus, in the SPICE Plus itself. Apart from it, the PAN number of the company with the income tax. You need not to apply for the PAN number with the income tax portal separately. You can avail the income tax PAN number by filing the SPICE Plus itself. Or we can say, if you're filing Spice Plus to the ROC, the integrated web server will automatically reflect in the income tax offices and the income tax will allot you the PAN number once you are incorporated. Apart from it, the TAN number, apart from it, EPFO, that is your provident fund registration number, it is mandatory to apply for IPFO under Spice Plus. The mandatory issue, of course, these all are mandatory. The mandatory allotment of PAN, TAN, EPF, that is employee provident fund, employee state insurance registration, professional tax, there is a tax, professional tax in Maharashtra only. 
So if your company's registered office is situated in Maharashtra, then you need to also apply for InSpice plus that is professional tax number. Apart from it, one bank account number. That is with the Spice Plus, when you will apply the Spice Plus and you will select which bank you are applying for your bank for your company's account at the time of incorporation, the automatically the MCA process will be updated in the bank accounts and you will be allotted a company's bank account at the time of incorporation. You need not go to the bank separately for opening the bank account after your incorporation. One company's bank account will be allotted to you with the bank which you will select. No doubt. You can select which bank you need to take your company account to. And the MCA Spice Plus will be processed in such a manner that in integrated way, the bank account will also be open to you. And of course, if you are applying to, then GSTIN number, that is the allotment of GST registration number, can also be applied by Spice Plus. So these are nine or 10 services which the MCA is giving you by the single form of Spice Plus. This is the importance of Spice Plus. Some other things which we want to discuss is if your company's authorized capital is up to 15 lakh rupees and the paid up, I mean, the authorized capital is sorry, 15 lakh rupees, there is zero filing fees, zero filing fees to file the Spice Plus. After 15 lakh rupees, there is a charge on the Spice Plus. If you are making such a huge company, there is a nominal percentage of the authorized capital which you need to, you need to pay to the ROC while filing Spice Plus. But up to 15 lakh rupees capital, the filing fees is zero. From 2020, which we had already discussed, the run will only be used for the existing company's name change. A new company, while at the time of incorporation, they not they cannot apply in run for reserving their name. The name reservation will be in Spice Plus only. You can give two names. That is important. You can give two names in Spice Plus. One is your first preference. If it is not allotted by ROC, what will be your second preference? That two names can be given. If by any reason your part A of Spice, that is name reservation, is rejected, that both the names are rejected, then you need to again apply it in Spice Plus with two different names. But in the part A, two options can be given to your company's proposed name. If one is rejected, what will be your alternate name? Simple. One more form is there that is Agile Pro that is attached with Spice Plus. You need to file Agile Plus also, which will be a separate application for GSTN, IPFO, this GSTN, IFO, ISI, ESI, professional tax. So if you are actually you wanting to use this part B of Spice Plus, then a form of Agile Pro in which some details will be given for the processing. So Agile Pro is also attached with part B of Spice Plus. This is not a separate thing to be filed again and again. This is a part of incorporation documents only. So these are the name clause and what we were discussing, the contents of the memorandum, name clause. So name cannot be undesirable, cannot resemble with some similar company, right? They cannot be used. Any words which is against the constitution, government. And of course, Spice Plus is an integrated form for company incorporation, for reserving name in case of new company. In case of an existing company, if you want to change your name, then run form can be applied. And this is the difference between Spice Plus and run.